Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. I am Jade Harrell. I'm joined by Amber Clear, Ivy Hartman, and Jamie Valentine Dolby today. Ladies, it's summertime. It's hot toward yeah. the end. Uh, how are you winding down your summer? In the air conditioning? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I am all about soaking up the moment, but also yeah. planning for the fall. Mm. So That's your season, yeah. isn't it? It is. Yeah. She loves it. Yep. Yeah. What about you, yeah. little lavish? Just coming off a big family trip. <laughs> uh, so my baby sister had a big birthday, and mm. so we all went, and we celebrated together okay. out of country, and took my little two-year-old niece with us and just brought us joy, and um, a few sunburns, but we're okay. We're big okay. sis you know, and I auntie. Ivy. Yeah, Auntie Ivy. That's right. That's right. I love I it. I bet you had the best time. You know what? And it's so good because you don't realize it. We need to have that laughter and it just mm-hmm. infuses you, right? Mm-hmm. And then you come back and you're like, okay, I'm ready because fall's around the corner for me. And then you just hit the ground running. And then yeah. before you know it, it's going to be summer 2025. That's you know right. what I mean? And that's so that's, right. I think Ivy's recharging ready. Right. right. How was your sizzling summer it's, season? It's going good. I'm spending the summer at the ballpark, St. Louis City SC. And the Cardinals game. So, um, you know, the se- the, the theme best. for the year is for the loo. And so hey. I'm spending my for the loo season in the loo, in the, in the loo. stadium. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, so go cards. We're, and what about you? We're going to come back. Yeah, Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys know that I'm yeah. all about... <laughs> What about you? <laughs> well, I where you will find me is where the people and programs that equip and inspire our communities to thrive. Okay. So that could be the stadium. That's probably going to be in the schools. It's definitely going to be outside and most certainly at STL TV. Jade. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love her. That's like it. That's it. Just bring in the positive. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But that's what we were about. And that's why this show was uh, so exciting to be able to talk about the United Way. And we have the president and CEO joining us today so you can learn more about the organization and volunteer opportunities. So stay with us. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Now, my dad has never said that to me, not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Welcome back to Let's Talk. Our guest today started her career in the banking industry. She moved then to serve children, and she's a woman of many, many firsts. She's now leading the United Way of Greater St. Louis, one of the top chapters in the national organization. Join me in welcoming United Way of Greater St. Louis President and CEO, Michelle Dynamo Tucker. Oh, thank Michelle, you. That's welcome. What the D stands for. It does. That's what I mean. And you will see very shortly. <laughs> Starting in banking, now you're here with the United Way. To me, it seems like an extension of what you've missioned for yourself all along. Can you tell us more about how you feel today in your new role? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I, I will tell you that this is actually a testament to not knowing <laughs> what a next step will no look way. like or what will unfold for you in life. Because I'll tell you, I did. I spent 20 years in corporate America and banking. Uh, but the last 10 years of uh, that stay was focused on the community. And so I was managing our philanthropic giving, our community outreach and our sponsorships. And so I got to know the community up close and personal. I like to say the community was my classroom at that point. And that was for about a decade. Yeah. And in 2017, I decided I wanted to get closer to a mission and impact the community in a different way. So I stepped into the nonprofit sector and I led up Upward Children and Family wow. Services for two years. And uh, after that, United Way came knocking and said, hey, have you thought about leveraging your experience into this role? And the more I thought about it, I said, well, if not me, who? Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, decided that that was my next adventure. And I'll tell you, it's been a journey where I have not looked back. Yes. Bravo, bravo. Uh, It seems like you now have at your disposal 
hopefully it's all working in, in, in perfect harmony, of course. The tools that you needed to get closer to community, to know what those needs are, but then also to apply your skills to make those things um, affect change, positive change. Uh, what are you looking forward to doing most or initiating uh, at this point with your organization? Well, I, let me tell you, our mission is to help people live their best possible lives. And I feel like I am living my passion in aligning to a mission like that because I've always liked to help people. Yeah. And so what I'd love to accomplish is changing lives. Mm -hmm. And so we are a resource for the community, yeah. as you know. And we respond to people when they are most challenged, when they experience a, ch a setback. And so because we are focused across the entire footprint of the MSA, we get to help a lot of people. And so I always say, you know, we can all relate to having a challenge or experiencing a challenge. And if we can't, then please raise your hand if you've never had a challenge. I can't be among <laughs> those folks. Right. Uh, but I'll tell you that people that experience challenges, they either have a support network, family, friends, colleagues mm -hmm. that they can tap into, or the people that come to us really need our help with things like basic needs. And that can be anything from food, shelter, child care, to something that is a lot more involved, like job training, education, and then we are there during uh, a time of crisis for the community. We have our 211 24-7 hotline. Uh, we are just able to right. show up for people in a big right. way. Right. What is the 211 hotline? Explain how that works and really how it really serves the community. Uh, in the best way. Well, I'm glad you asked. So people can, we try to make it as, as, as easy as possible. So in 20, well, actually 2007 mm -hmm. is when we introduced the 211 hotline. Mm -hmm. And so people can just simply pick up the phone and dial 211 and they can connect to my team 24-7. Uh, and uh, if they explain in a challenge or an issue that they're uh, going through, then we can connect them to resources that can help them through that challenge. Mm -hmm. And so they can either uh, connect with us through a phone call or we have a chat feature. Um, so we are always there for the community. Thanks for asking that. though. We receive about 200,000 phone calls or connections for our services on an ang annual ba My basis. My goodness. What's mm -hmm. the greatest need for help that you guys have when you get those calls? Mm. Wow. So you know, people show. call for various reasons, but uh, some of the primary reasons are uh, shelter. So someone in need of uh, housing, and it could be for many reasons. Uh, we unfortunately have cases where, you know, uh, people might need to uh, secure shelter from an abusive uh, household um, or they may just uh, have experienced a difficult time in paying their rent and find themselves needing um, either assistance with rent or assistance with something like utilities. So we're just able to help them over mm -hmm. a hump. Yeah. United Way represents the coordination of efforts with other organizations yes. and a number of partners, participants, mm -hmm. volunteers, providers. <laughs> Is it an overarching view of what the needs and resources are. How do you make keep all of those pieces working? We may have um, emergency uh, housing needs, but then mm -hmm. how do you coordinate that with the providers of that need or <clears throat> determine the levels of need that are are helped. I mean, you're the largest, the greatest representation of the national organization. How do you make all those pieces work? Well, actually, we have a very local focus. And so that makes it great because we are able to, again, get close to the issues here. And so we conduct needs assessments. And uh, just a couple of years ago, we did a really deep dive across the regional area where County by county, we asked people directly what were their most pressing needs. And so we were able to rank them. So going back to your question earlier, even through the 211 hotline and through COVID, we saw that families were suffering with some of the things that I talked about, in addition to um, the need to connect closer to jobs and training. 
So training that helps to tool and retool people into industries. And you can imagine that through COVID yeah. that posed an even greater challenge on you the other side pivot. because some jobs didn't return. Mm -hmm. You're right. right. And so how do we make decisions on connecting uh, people to agencies? We really do assess up front. We actually, um, 211 has evolved so much since 2007. Yeah. So in 2020, we were able to introduce something called CIE, the Community Information Exchange. And it's a technology platform where if someone connects to United Way, again, we can do a full assessment up front and we can launch connections to um, a suite of support. Mm -hmm. And each of those yeah, partners, we can kind of see the services being completed. They can make referrals to other uh, other partners. And um, I think that, you know, if you think about it from a holistic support standpoint, mm -hmm. this is the best way. Um, and people don't have to keep their, telling their story over and over again, yeah. right? They don't exactly. have to be re-traumatized. Exactly. But the way our network works, we have 162 safety net agencies that we partner really closely with. And uh, they are a part of this referral system but I'll tell you that they are out there working in the community every day, receiving connections directly from clients. And what we do in cases like that is I find that the best support we can give is the funding, the flexible funding, so that they can scale in a way that they need to. And we provide volunteers yeah. pretty easily through our volunteer center. Yes. The list goes on. Sure, I want to sure. talk more about the volunteering option. Yes. Also, is there a success story that comes to mind without, I know confidentiality is key, but like when we talk about a case study that the, the, United Way has helped. Do and let's, let's let's save that one for, for that after right, the second right. segment. Okay. But are you getting a sense of what are the causes for the conditions? You've got story oh, now to say, here's what I'm experiencing. With that, um, from your purview, are you, are you able to get a sense of what's at the core? That's a really great yeah. question. I'll tell you, it's complex. It's complex. There's never an easy something to point to. But what we pride ourselves on is looking uh, for root causes. And so through systems change work, and that's something that's we're awesome. very focused on, we try to get to the heart of issues that we see so many symptoms from. Yeah. And so when you ask, you know, uh, what's the, the cause or what initiated someone needing to connect to United Way or one of our agencies, like I said, it varies. Um, you might get someone who is just experiencing a hardship, right? And so what really, I, if you ask me what keeps me awake at night, it's the fact that we have 40% of the families in the regional area who can't comfortably meet their basic mm -hmm. needs on a Same. monthly basis. And yeah. that makes us wonder about, is that a systems issue, systematic issue too, systemic issue too? This is so right where we wanted to be. That's what the spaces that we want to talk. You're, yes. you're touching on all those points. We do have to take a quick break. But if you all stay with us when we return, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. There's more with Michelle Tucker, president and CEO of United Way of Greater St. Louis. Stay with us. When I arrived in the U.S. at 19, I struggled to find job opportunities without a high school diploma. Everything I have, my education, my career, my marriage, I owe to the Adult Literacy Center and my teachers. Your achievement has set an example for so many students. Most importantly, your daughter. Education was the key that unlocked all my opportunities. When you graduate, they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free adult education centers near you. And welcome back to Let's Talk. We are spending time with the president and CEO of the United Way of Greater St. Louis, Michelle Dynamo Tucker. Mm -hmm. And before the break, I interrupted what will help you understand the work that they're doing through a success story. You were asking? Ivy? Yes, I know it's putting you on the spot a little bit, but in terms of like a, a case study or a success story that we've seen. Um, I know you talked about losing sleep over people, you know, this 40 percent. And so let's kind of focus on something on the other side, the, the small little things that we can go. Yes, I, that was that was that, that worked. That was a win. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I will focus on, um, you know, we have a program called United for Families, but I'll, I'll tell you about a, a case and I'll be uh, very nondescript right. about it. But um, and it, not, it didn't necessarily happen through United for Families, but I'll tell you that these are the types of cases that flow through United for Families. Um, but when I was at uh, the nonprofit previously, mm -hmm. it was Epworth, mm -hmm. actually, uh, we had a young professional um, who had experienced hard times and really a spiral had happened. Um, and I, I saw the services uh, at Epworth surround this person and help to lift her into just a, a different journey. Right. And so it was uh, someone who had struggled with uh, keeping a job. It was someone who had family uh, challenges that uh, none of us can imagine at mm. the age this person was. Um, so we were able to connect this person to a program that actually United Way funds. It's called BUD. It's a BUD program. It's Building Union, Union Diversity. Diversity. You know about this yes. program. Okay. Well, tell us. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us too. <laughs> I want to be in the bud. <laughs> It's super yeah. cool. It's like a nine week it program is. in it the is. summer. And they actually, they have different co cohorts that start yeah. at different times now. And really it's cultivating more women and minorities in unions. And so what's great is you, I think you have to be 18 and older in order to do it, but you apply and then you get to try out all these different unions. And not only are you the person trying them out, they're kind of trying them out to kind of yes. see what's a good fit because sometimes there's that barrier to getting into mm -hmm. unions. You know, you got to know somebody or you got to know yeah. all these other things. And they're really a wonderful way to. Okay, so that's what so I know about no, her. Is that you, right? <laughs> Enough How'd said. she do? No. I'm not <laughs> some, you know, every hired. <laughs> but the wonderful thing about that program is that it unlocks so many avenues for a person. And I'll tell you that everything you just described, we were able to connect her to the program. And people thought, oh, there's a huge math requirement. Right. And it, she passed that. Go like, ahead. Yes, flying colors. Uh, move through the program and at graduation, what's so special about this program is you have all of these employers that attend the, the graduation mm -hmm. and they are there ready to offer you an apprenticeship wow. on the spot that eventually turns into uh, a, a role that unlocks, um, you know, income uh, That's right. that, that again, you wouldn't necessarily be able to connect to if you're challenged by some mm -hmm. of the circumstances that this person was challenged by, but it happened. That's, that's and powerful. we also were able to find uh, housing mm -hmm. for the person. And it really just changed the course. And this is someone I'm just going to say uh, that, you know, uh, she had mentioned that she had been sleeping in a car mm. for, for a while. So it's just a yeah. complicated situation, but that was a success story to me. It How was does really that representative of the way you the way you address the the myriad of situations yes. as as an organization sounds like wraparound is yes. is key yes and i and i'll go back to united for family so that is a program that we launched uh, more fully through covid and um it is a, a family centered program so it's a holistic model where we are able to connect to a family to understand what the challenge slate oh, is right it. It. and so we're asking about if someone is underemployed or unemployed yeah. right yeah. Um, so we're able to connect them to additional training right to get a promotion or a new job and then we're asking questions about you know is there a challenge with digital divide, you know, mm. are the kids yeah. able to connect to strong um, mm. internet uh, connections where they can do lessons? Uh, because we know that the requirements yeah. have changed now. Right. You really yeah. need to have yeah. access to iPads, computers to complete yeah. lessons. And then if you even think about the parents in the house. If you don't have strong internet connections, you can't apply and for jobs. You can't, you can't email. You can't. You can't. That's <laughs> the other thing. Yeah. Right. But what we saw through COVID mainly was um, we were able to get people to donate equipment and um, the connections were there, wow. but they didn't know how to use the equipment. Mm. So we had to reach out to volunteers, which oh. brings me to volunteers, the right. power of volunteers mm. uh, stepping forward to sign up to say, I can help. I can help with that piece. Right. Mm -hmm. To unlock the understanding. You guys really are a big connector for volunteers we are. in the city. I, I love that 
um, you all have a database. When someone when someone is in need of a volunteer, they can go to the United Way. When people are looking to to volunteer, mm-hmm. they can go to the United Way. How does how did that really come about? I mean, as somebody who works with other nonprofits, mm-hmm. and I'm always looking for volunteers for an event. The first <laughs> thing I tell people is. Let's put it on the United Way website. Why is that mm-hmm. so important to really serve? Because they're not always, you know, you're not really getting the, di- the United Way is not really getting the direct donation. But how does United Way really benefit or what's the purpose of serving um, in that capacity for the volunteer and the, uh, the funder? Well, it helps us to live our mission. And yeah. uh, so mm-hmm. it's a compliment to, you know, I, here's what I say. You know, you have to follow the dollars. And so because we are investing in a network of safety net organizations that are out there on the ground doing their work each and every day, they need additional capacity. And that's where volunteers come in. People power, I call it. Mm-hmm. Right. So this volunteer center, it's been around for 90 years, wow. I think. I think we're 91. As of last year, it was 90 years. Wow. And we have thousands of opportunities, like you mm-hmm. said, Jamie. So the thing is, um, you know, when I think about our volunteer center, I think of it like a matchmaking system. So everybody likes matchmaking yes. right now. That's what it is. It really aligns um, your interest to an open opportunity. And so thousands upon thousands of opportunities are out there, but they are loaded by our nonprofit partners who place on that site okay. the most needed opportunities, right? Okay. So, so, so that's as a volunteer, I just go to United Way. Just go Way. to stlvolunteer.org. So that's stlvolunteer.org. Okay. And it'll tap you into uh, a database like no other. We are the regional's volunteer center. It's amazing. Sweet. It's amazing. And you know what? The other thing that I thought about is the United Way runs a great campaign every fall in terms of raising dollars, yes. right? And my my other employer, they we say this is United Way time. And, and I think when I hear you talk about, though, all the places I'm already giving time yeah. or money to or whatever that United Way is partnered with, it's, it makes me even more passionate about getting United Way. So how do I, as a donor, see who those partners are? Is it also on a website? Well, first of all, thank you for being out there in the community <laughs> and being impactful in the way that you've described. But you can go to helpingpeople.org. That's helpingpeople.org. And you can learn so much about United Way, especially about what I call our hallmark, which is the uh, community campaign. And that is a time like no other, but it's when the community (laughs) comes together as one and they make gifts through workplace giving or other means on our website. Um, But it is uh, from September through the end of November. And it's where the community just Mm mobilized. We mobilized to support, especially those 162 nonprofit agencies and so much more 211. It just unlocks Mm -hmm. a host of services. And as you said earlier, it's kind of a wraparound that it's supporting. So if people want to get involved, they can either get involved through their companies. When I said workplace giving, it's through a payroll deduction. So any amount matters, right? From a dollar to whatever you can afford, we see people just having it deducted from their paychecks. Or you can go to our website, like I said, helpingpeople.org, or you can get involved as a volunteer. We have plenty of volunteer opportunities that are available, especially during that uh, campaign period. Mm -hmm. Would that be helpful for uh, high school students and students that need to get that additional credit for their graduation volunteering? Yes, I okay. love where we your head is. Right, so absolutely. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And uh, schools, <clears throat> they can reach out to us or they can actually connect on our volunteer website and you can build these large scale volunteer opportunities or engage my team and they'll certainly help with that. One of the things that we recently uh, connected to was uh, an opportunity to Uh, get athletes out into the community. And so these were college athletes. Mm -hmm. And so we have a special partnership with Missouri Valley Conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been two years now, but this past year, it was just such an amazing time that we had. But as the athletes travel from market to market, we are helping them to connect to volunteer opportunities. There's another volunteer initiative, and it is where we are partnering with Adam Wainwright, 
through his nonprofit. And I hope you've seen the advertisements here, but we are able to, they're not kids, but the adults, they're young adults playing baseball, but we're able to mobilize the uh, MLB players in every market that they go to, not just the Cardinals, but whoever is inspired to connect to a volunteer opportunity, our United Way network, we have talked to our partners and we right here in St. Louis are helping to connect them across the That's what it means by United Way, the way to do this unified to make that incredible uh, impact. Michelle, we have enjoyed being with you. The time goes far too fast (laughs) uh, for us to enjoy you in entirety and learn as much as you all have to offer. So we understand that helpingpeople.org and stlvolunteer.org are great places to go. So make sure that you look into one of those two spaces to get involved and help uh, Michelle accomplish this great mission as she leads this organization for us. So for more information, again, visit helpingpeople.org and stlvolunteer.org and stay with us. There's a little bit more. Let's talk left when we return. We should have saved it for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> stay with us. Everyone's on the way. What happened? Please get my mom and dad out of my car. The actual mission is to help people live their best possible lives. That just speaks such volumes to me. Like moves me in that yeah. to get involved. And I think it's on both ends of the spectrum because I think people looking to volunteer, which I didn't know that they had a resource for that, mm-hmm. but sometimes people are looking to live their best possible life through Bye. helping the community yes. and this provides an outlet for that. So yeah. It's really one of the best. I mean, it's it's a service I've loved that I use so much. I use it when I need to volunteer, but I really use it for a lot of organizations that you know, are just kind of shorthanded. Like there may be a big project that's coming up or they may have a big cleanup or a big event that they need volunteers for registration. That's a great resource. And even in terms of resources, right? When somebody, a student or a family comes to me and I'm like, and we have a social worker that helps connect students, but like this is going to be something that I talk about more in my everyday life in terms of, because if y'all will know, my my girlfriend calls me aggressively helpful. (laughs) And so... I'll I'll own it, but it's also, you know, it's like, oh, you're telling me you didn't. Okay, I got it. I'm going to help you. Well, now you go to the hub. Like, there's a whole hub. I think that they, I think United Way really is the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're the answer um, to a lot of our questions when you talk about giving And Michelle, her whole aura and being. Yeah. She's oh. there. Jamie, I mean, oh I'm right. so glad really. that you asked about that 211. It's been around a while, but right. sometimes we take those right. things for granted. We even sure. use 911 incorrectly. So that being such a valid question to understand that first points first. And there, from there, once you get a person, they'll start helping you figure out right. be- where you can be best. Because at. you're calling 911 because it's an emergency. Being unhoused is an emergency. Yeah, Needing exactly. food is an emergency, right? right? But, it's, but not it's not for, for that outlet, right? right? And so they try the best they can, but if, if they're booked up, there needs to be another place where you can mm-hmm. call. Mm-hmm. 211 can get you to who you need to be. And yeah. so I love that. Yeah. I love that they do that. Shouts out to Michelle Dynamo Tucker mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, for the work she's doing, for what she's already done, and most certainly for the way she's making the United Way a much more effective, responsive source for all of us here in St. Louis. So that's all the time we have. They want us to stop talking now, I guess. (laughs) We love to talk about what's great about St. Louis, and now we know United Way. Exactly. (laughs) United Way and what they need are ambassadors and champions for that cause. So make sure you get it in your system. So again, we want to thank Michelle Tucker, who is the president and CEO of the United Way. Um, you can always find us and 
wherever you go to get your social media and information, make sure you look for us. Yeah. We're on Facebook, yeah. X, Instagram, YouTube, uh, or just go to stltv.net. We are there if you missed the show or want more information about our guests. I'm Jade Harrell for Amber Clear, Ivy Hartman, and the dynamic also, Jamie Valentine Dolby, who keeps us sharp. We'll see you next time on Let's Talk. (laughs) Talk to you later, everybody. Yeah.